welcome again to our online service. Really glad you're able to be with us again today. Hope that time of communion was special for you. And isn't it great about what this team of people from our church are doing in terms of, uh, of going from here up to Tara, which is uh, west uh, from here, up in the middle of, of uh, Queensland, to help an impoverished community. God bless you all for, for doing that. I love the outward mission focus of this church. Well, we are going through a series at the moment called Wisdom in Times of Uncertainty. Murdoch papers yesterday at the usual sensational headline had how Trump's win could spell world chaos. Actually, I think the world is already in chaos with the impact of the coronavirus. While we ought to be praying for a coronavirus vaccine, it is only trust in the one true God that will give the world peace and hope and healing. It is he who is the one who will help us to weather the storms of life. Going through the book of Proverbs, we've been finding these nuggets of wisdom that give us a, a solid foundation to cope through times of uncertainty. Today we are looking at the importance of having someone or someones in our life that will help us sharpen who we are and to do the same to another. It comes from Proverbs 27 verse 17. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Whenever you are at a crossroads, if you ever go through a crisis, or when you are losing your way, or you just need a little guidance, it is always helpful to have those trusted people in your life. The concept of iron sharpening iron obviously implies at least two pieces of iron. It would be impossible for one tool to become sharper without the presence of the other. Left alone, both blades would be dull and quite useless. In the ancient days, the process of sharpening uh, swords and knife or, or tools would usually include three steps. Pound out the iron over a blazing fire. Use an iron file or a piece of iron ore to rub out the defects and small chips on the side of the blade or tool. And rub and polish the side of the blade in order to lift the edge so it will become sharp. This simple proverb illustrates an important biblical principle. God expects us to live and to serve in a community of other believers where we can sharpen each other to become the people God intends us to be. As I'm sure you know, iron can rust and bits fall off, and what was once sharp becomes blunt over time. Now, I don't want to come across as rather judgmental here, but we too can lose our edge through the normal process of usage. We can all get a bit rusty, become a bit dull, just like a knife or bladed tools needed friction to bring out its full potential. We too need to be buffered and, and polished by others so our capacity can increase and our character can expand. People who value the sharpening process willingly place themselves in environments where this calibrating process can happen in their lives. They know that just as blades can't restore themselves, they can't sharpen themselves to full potential without the help of others. People need other people. The process of helping someone else improve their effectiveness absolutely requires a close and positive relationship. Early in the same chapter, Proverbs 6 verse 4, it says, Wounds from a sincere friend are better than many kisses from an enemy. We know this concept to be true. It is much better to accept godly advice or even constructive criticism from someone we know, someone that we love, and someone we know that really cares about us than it is from a stranger or simple acquaintance. We want to know that the person giving us the counsel has our best interest at heart. Friends may indeed wound us at times, but in this context, 
we can understand and appreciate their genuine motives. On the other side, the kisses from enemies fall flat and we can imagine their hidden agenda. That's why it's so important for each of us to build growing relationships with others in life. We all need people who can help us rub off those hard edges and who honestly have our best interest in mind when they do. There are times when these sharpening conversations, even from good friends, can come across as hard. But because we know their heart, it might be something that we need to hear. During the week, I was visiting someone who told me about a friend of theirs who no longer sees the need to go to church. They still believe in God, but believe that they don't need to be with others. We both found this really sad. There are many Christians like this, and I suspect that some, who may even be watching you, you might be watching right now, have come through the restrictions and lockdown, believing that all you need to do is to watch services online and, and not be a part of Christian fellowship. I'm not talking about those who physically just can't come on Sundays to church. I'm talking about an attitude that is forming. If this is you, I really challenge you to get back into a Christian fellowship, a, a church, meeting with others every week. Iron does sharpen iron. We need each other. Christian fellowship works best in smaller groups because we get to know each other beyond the superficial to the deeper level. Yesterday, Lizel and I and Robbie and Emily were invited to one of Reedy's life groups. It was a social gathering which included food and laughter. It was a great, great time. As one couple was leaving, they quickly shared a need within their family in which another member of the group asked if they could pray for them. Simple, but effective. That's Christian community. But there might be times when those in these smaller groups meet just one-on-one -on -one to sharpen each other. I know this happens from time to time with one of our own life groups at Reading and that the guys meet up together outside of their group time. They are doing what the older translation suggests, iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. We all need a Paul, a Barnabas, a Lois, a Timothy. Paul, who was an older person, invested in the lives of younger people. An older person willing to invest in your life. Somebody who's been down the road and is willing to share the lessons they have learnt and the experiences that have shaped their lives. An older person to spend time with you and to show you some of the ropes. Barnabas, who encouraged others. A soul brother or sister who loves you where you are and encourages you to become the person you can be. People seem to change for the better when Barnabas was around. We need to surround ourselves with these kind of people because we become that which we are surrounded by. Lois, who was one of the first of the believers in Jesus, whose daughter Eunice then became a Christian, and then Eunice's son, Timothy, then started following Jesus too. As a grandparent, parent or aunt or uncle, you can shape and shape younger family members' lives. Timothy, a younger person into whose life you can come to offer help, a person that you can help reach their potential. Every youth today needs someone who cares about them enough to get involved with them. I'm always grateful to God for a lady who I have never met. Miss Perry lived across the road to my father's family house in Box Hill in Victoria. Dad's family didn't go to church. When Dad was young, Miss Perry would come every Sunday and take Dad and his three younger siblings to church. Dad became a Christian at the Box Hill Church of Christ, then entered Bible college and the rest is history. Sometimes we can become a bit dull. Who are you spending time with? Who's keeping you sharp? During the week, my sister Jenny sent me a link to an article about Gary Ablett Jr. Gary played for Geelong in last, Sunday, or last Saturday's AFL Grand Final.
As most would know, Gary also played up here for the Gold Coast Suns. Gary is an amazing player. He's just retired. But he won two grand finals and, and two Brownlow medals. But according to Gary, the most important day of his life happened in a shared house in Torquay when he was just 21. As Gary was emerging from his father's shadow on the field, Gary Senior was also an incredible player, stuff was happening in Gary Junior's life off field. One night, Ablett laid in bed crying. He was raised in a Christian home but drifted from church. No Christian mates to sharpen his Christian life. That night he decided to pray in desperation. And this is what he said in his new released book that was just released this week. I had a very powerful experience. At that time, my football career was beginning to take off and I was finally finding my feet as a regular part of the Geelong lineup. There was three particular areas in my life that were really overwhelming me. This night I was lying in bed and crying, which prompted me to pray to God, if you're real, I need your help because I'm really struggling. My prayer was as short as that. Well, Ablett drifted off to sleep before suddenly waking up at 1am, feeling unsettled. He remembers sitting up in bed before deciding to go downstairs and watch TV. He turns on the TV and hadn't even had time to change the channel before a Christian show began to play. Straight away, the program touched on one of the very things Gary was struggling with. And then it made him think back to the words that he just prayed. The program rolled straight into another show that touched on the second thing that he was really struggling with. Then, no exaggeration, a third show followed and that one addressed his other worry. Three shows in a row had covered the problems that he had been troubling him. He was absolutely buzzing. He just couldn't believe it. And then he says, That night, as my simple prayer was answered, the series of events led me to truly believe that God was speaking directly to me. It was transformational and became a real turning point in my life. From that point, I began not just reading the Bible, but studying it because I wanted to learn and understand more about God and his character. It was initially comforting to know I had someone there who was never going to let me down, who was always going to be there for me, no matter what. Amazing. His father, Gary, Gary Sr., told the Herald Sun just last week, that seeing his son, Gary Jr., develop his own relationship with God meant more to him than anything that he's achieved on the footy field. Gary Sr. also said, I've always tried to make it clear to my children that it's okay to want to do well in your profession, but it's more important to understand that your self-worth isn't based on how you perform at work. It is in who you are as children of God and as sons and daughters of their Heavenly Father. I've tried to lay that foundation for them very early and I do think that it has helped them to know that they are loved for who they are, not what they do. Well, Gary Ablett's Christian walk progressed during his time with the Gold Coast Sons, where he had several Christian teammates. Together, they were like iron sharpening iron as men sharpen each other. Great story, isn't it? Finally, God can use the wounds of a friend to sharpen us, motivate us, and to provide some accountability for our lives. However, true victory and lasting progress comes only from God himself. Hebrews 4 verse 12 says, For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It expresses our innermost thoughts and desires. The familiar verses in 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17 shed some light on this. It says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. 
God can and will use the iron sharpening iron process of good friends and loved ones to help us in our walk with him. But most certainly, God will use the convicting power of his Holy Spirit and the word of God to rebuke us of the sinful and harmful practices in our lives. But God never just points out our weaknesses without providing a solution. God's word will help us correct the problem and will provide the step-by-step -step instructions we need to go on living. Gary Ablett Jr. in his book also wrote, I believe a big part of that development in me has come from studying from the Bible who God says I am and actually believing it. The iron sharpening iron process that Proverbs 27.17 provides is indeed a helpful and maybe even convicting part of our life. We must highly value and build godly and growing relationships with other Christ followers who can encourage us to be closer in our walk with Him. But these relationships and the resulting conversations and discussions must drive us back to the Word of God where our loving and gracious Heavenly Father gives us true life-changing strategies. Thanks for listening to me today. Would you please pray with me? Father God in heaven, thank you for your most amazing love and grace. And Father God, I just pray, Lord, that you will help us as believers to be a part of a wonderful Christian community that will help us to grow and, and, and just be your influences, Lord. Father God, forgive us when we withdraw from wanting to be sharpened spiritually and in our lives, Lord. And I just pray that you'll bring people into our lives that we can help them to grow and they can help us to grow as iron sharpens iron. So thank you, Lord, for this timely word. And thank you for the Bible that brings life to us. So now I pray, Father God, that you help us to be your servants. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks for watching our service today. Uh, we'll leave some questions for our house churches. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.